How to Make a Canoe For thousands of years, people have been relying on canoes for water travel. In many cases, these were simple canoes and carving knowledge was passed from generation to generation. At its most basic, a canoe can be dug out from a large log, however, you can make a more sophisticated version using strips of wood. Either way, you need to plan and have access to good basic tools. Method 1 Preparing to Make a Strip Canoe 1. Purchase a Strip Canoe Kit Research a reputable canoe company and select the model of strip canoe you'd like to put together. Place your order and wait for the kit to arrive. Your kit should contain the wood for your canoe, the layout and instructions, some hardware, and fiberglass cloth. You may require other tools to actually assemble your strip canoe. 2. Read the instructions. This will ensure that you are completely prepared. Make sure you have all the necessary tools and equipment to put together your canoe. This may take several hours, depending on the difficulty of the canoe you've chosen. Take your time to really read and visualize the instructions. If you don't understand a step or two, contact the company for assistance. This will save you time in the long run. 3. Build a saw back. This is what you will build your strip canoe on. Place a long thin table or platform on top of saw horses or blocks. The platform or piece of wood should be completely level. Your saw back will probably be 12 to 15 long and will act as the skeleton around which you'll assemble your strip canoe. 4. Cut out the forms. Hopefully, your kit contains molds or outlines for forms. Forms act as a support system to shape and hold strips that are stretched and attached to your saw back. Trace the forms onto particle board and use a saw to cut them out. The forms will appear mushroom-shaped when stacked. The wider end will be placed on the bottom of your sawhorse or the bottom of your canoe. Some kits may include pre-cut forms. In this case, simply spread them out in the correct order and begin to attach them to the saw back. 5. Apply the forms to the saw back. You'll want to attach the forms to station blocks, small one-wide pieces of wood. Make sure the wider part of the form is connected to the station block. Then attach the station blocks flat on the saw back using drywall screws. Attach your forms station blocks about 12 from each other and make sure they are evenly centered. This will keep your boat aligned. 6. Attach the ends. Depending on whether or not your kit includes them, you may have to cut two quarter, circle sections that will hold the shape at the end of your canoe. Again, use drywall screws to attach the ends to saw back. Make sure the ends are completely centered. If you have to cut them, trace the outline onto plywood and use a saw to cut the sections out. 7. Cover the ends and forms with masking tape. You'll be attaching wood strips to the ends and you don't want them to accidentally adhere to the ends. Covering the ends and forms with masking tape prevents the strips from sticking and should make it easier to remove when you take the forms and ends out. You need to cover the edges of the forms since glue from the wood strips could cause the strips to stick to your forms. The tape will make it easier to remove the forms. Method 2 Assembling Your Strip Canoe 1. Spread carpenter's glue on the edges of your wood strips. Strip canoes are edge, glued which is what will eventually allow them to hold shape. While you'll attach the strips to the forms and end of the boat using staples, the glue between the strips will create the shape. You may want to wear gloves when applying glue and stripping the canoe. 2. Strip the canoe. Start stapling the thin wooden strips directly to the ends and forms. Lay your first few strips across what will become the top of your canoe, this will be closest to the saw back. Alternate stapling strips on both sides. This will keep your boat even and centered. Make sure the strips are placed snugly next to one another. This allows the glued edges to come into contact and seal with the other strip, maintaining the canoe's shape. 3. Continue working your way up the sides. Keep stapling and placing the edge, glued strips across both sides. You will be working your way up to what will become the bottom of your canoe. If you need extra support while stapling the strips into place, use clamps. 4. Remove the staples. Once you've attached all your strips and allowed the glue to dry, carefully remove the staples from the ends and forms. Use a pair of pliers and pull straight out. Take care not to damage or dent the wood by twisting the staples as you pull them out. 5. Plain excess material at the ends of your canoe. 
you may have an extra bit of wood sticking out at the ends. Use a block plane to trim off where the strips stick out. If you notice any very rough strips of wood that stand out, use the plane to make it even and flush with the canoe. 6. Sand the canoe. Use a coarse sandpaper and sand with the grain of the wood. Go over the entire canoe using long even strokes. Make sure not to spend too long in one spot or you may develop a weak area in the canoe. Replace your sandpaper when you notice it starting to become dull. This will save you time and ensure that the canoe is evenly sanded. 7. Remove the canoe from the forms. First, take out the drywall screws that are attached to the stations and saw back. You should be able to carefully pull the forms out of the canoe while turning the canoe out and off of the saw back. The plastic tape will make removing the forms easier. You will also want assistance in holding the canoe and gently turning it over as you remove the forms. 8. Seal your strip canoe. Many strip canoes use a combination of fiberglass, epoxy, and varnish to seal and reinforce the wood strips. Follow the individual package instructions regarding specific application, dry time, and safety precautions. Wait for your epoxy or varnish to completely dry and seal before taking your canoe to the water. Method 3 Preparing to Carve Your Dugout Canoe 1. Determine what kind of tree you want to use. Research what kind of trees grow in local forests. Then, decide which kind you'd like to use for your canoe. Look for a sturdy stout tree that is straight and symmetrical. Dugout canoes are often made from cedar, willow, spruce, pine, cottonwood, and redwood. Traditionally, they were made with whatever was growing close to a river source. 2. Select your actual tree. Walk through a nearby forest and find a tree. Look for one that's large and tall enough to make into a canoe. Remember, you'll only be using the long trunk of the tree, you won't want to use branches. You can cut down a tree, especially one that's already dead, or you can use a tree that's already fallen. 3. Cut the tree into a log. If the tree is still standing, have someone help to first cut the tree down. Then, make two clean cuts at the ends of your log. Make sure no branches are growing out from any part of your log. Your log should be as long as you'd like your canoe to be. Make sure you have permission to cut down a tree even if it's dead. If you're unsure how long you'd like to make your canoe, cut a longer log. That way you can cut down and make a shorter canoe, if you choose. 4. Decide where you'll work. Given the enormous size of your log, you may want to work in the field or forest where you cut your log. This will save you from having to move it. If you decide to move your log to an off-site workstation, be sure to get help and use proper lifting equipment. Logs can weigh hundreds of pounds and cause serious injury if moved carelessly. Method 4 Carving Your Dugout Canoe 1. Strip the bark from your log. Use whatever tool feels most comfortable to you. A shovel might be your best bet for removing large sections of bark quickly. Or you can use an axe or an adze to chip away the bark which should easily break off. Bark scraps make good kindling for fires. Keep them if you plan on camping or making fires. 2. Draw an outline on your log. Using a pencil, draw along the sides just how you want your ends to taper. On the top of your log draw where the ends taper and mark where the center of the boat will be. The center outline will look a bit like an oval. If you suspect it could rain and wash away your outline, consider lightly chiseling in your outline using a small chisel and hammer. 3. Create a flat bottom for your canoe. Make perpendicular cuts across the length of the log. You'll then use a chainsaw, adze, or axe to split out all the sections between the cuts. 4. Roll the log over. You'll want to have help and some rope to carefully roll the flat bottom onto the ground. You should now see a rounded part at the top. 5. Create a flat top for your canoe. Again, make perpendicular cuts across the length of the log and then split out all the sections between the cuts. Don't go too deep, since you'll be cutting into the sides of your canoe. 6. Cut out the ends. You can use either a chainsaw to crudely remove large chunks of wood, or you can use an axe or adze to chop away as much wood as you lick. Usually, the ends are tapered into points. This allows your canoe to move in either direction. 7. Cut away the center. 
look to your outline and leave at least 5, 8 to 1 on the sides. Be careful to stop at least 2 to 3 from the bottom of the log. This will prevent you from accidentally cutting holes into your canoe. While it might seem like you're cutting out too much wood, you need to in order to reduce the weight of your canoe. Removing the bulk of the wood will help its buoyancy. Method 5 Finishing Your Dugout Canoe 1. Shape the Ends you can use a smaller elbow adds for more control. Gradually cut and smooth the ends into your desired shape. 2. Cut the sides of the canoe. At this point, your canoe probably still looks boxy. You can cut the top sides into a gentle swoop to reduce the weight of your canoe and give it an elegant look. 3. Detail the center of the canoe. Although you've removed the bulk of the wood from the center of your canoe, you still need to take a smaller knife, adze, or axe and clean up the edges. Try to make the center as uniform as possible. Remember not to remove too much wood from the bottom or you might cut a hole. 4. Sand your canoe smooth. Use heavy grit sandpaper and rub your sandpaper over the entire surface of your canoe. Work the sandpaper with the grain of the wood. Be sure to blow away any sawdust before sealing your canoe. 5. Seal the canoe. Use a spar varnish and apply multiple coats. Be sure to use a light sandpaper in between coats. This will help your varnish layers stick. Follow specific package instructions on your varnish and be cautious when using. Wait for your varnish to completely dry and seal before taking your canoe to the water. Warnings Use caution when using saws and others' tools so you don't injure yourself. Things Bandsaw. Strip canoe kit that includes instructions, outlines, and prepared wood strips. Staple gun. Block plane. Coarse sandpaper. Epoxy. Fiberglass. Varnish. Thick and long log. Hand or chainsaw. Axe. Adds. Chisel. Sledgehammer. Sandpaper.